Hi guys, welcome to Let's Talk BD, the official podcast of the BD School, the first educational platform entirely dedicated to business development. Here we interview business development professionals working in the field every day, as well as startup founders, so they can give you all the insights, tips, and best practices to help you become a better business development professional. Let's get ready for the next episode. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to an episode of Let's Talk BD podcast. Uh, that's actually been a while. It's been a few months without uh, hearing from us, but uh, here we're back uh, and we're back interviewing some interesting people in the business development sphere. Uh, I'm actually very excited to introduce you our guest for today, which is Adam Graham from Gray Matters and BD Matters. Hi, Graham. How are you? Uh, hi. <laughs> hi, Adam. <laughs> so it's... Uh... I'll forgive you on that one. Um, yeah. I'm, no, I'm really, uh, I'm really excited to be here. Obviously, we, we've spoken a couple of times, and uh, I think we, we, we see eye to eye, and, and sort of the, the way of BD should be done. So I'm excited to get into a conversation with you. Absolutely, because yeah, everyone. So uh, as you know, like we are very passionate about business development, and then uh, along our journey, we met uh, uh, Adam, and who is building actually community uh, to, for business developers as well. Uh, so it was very interesting to see how uh, the business development world is changing, how people are trying to get together and solve some issues together, and that's precisely the topic of today's uh, episode because we want to talk about communities and how we can leverage them. Uh, in business development, really drawing from uh, Adam's experience, uh, building communities and, of course, being uh, a champion uh, in uh, business development, right? Uh, so, Adam, can you tell us a little bit more about what you do, um, about Grey Matters, BD Matters, just uh, uh, share a little bit more about you with us? Yeah, sure. So, um, Grey Matters is my consultancy. So, we're a, a new business growth consultancy. Um, we help uh, businesses with their sort of positioning, with their growth strategy, with their plan of how they're going to sort of build awareness, generate leads. And we then help kind of act as a sort of outsourced sales and marketing department. So we actually can sort of plug in and we help deliver some of those campaigns. Um, so, that's the sort of the core business, how it started. BD Matters um, is my community. That was the sort of side hustle project I started during lockdown. Um, and that is designed to, to bring together, you know, like-minded people, um, maybe feeling a little bit isolated in a B business development role, you know, a lot of pressure, a lot of expectation put on us BD people. Um, and it's a real chance to bring those, those people together to, you know, relate to each other, talk about the trials and tribulations, the ups and the downs of being in BD and, and sort of learn network, um, with each other to sort of, you know, grow our businesses, grow ourselves. Um, so yeah, they're the two, the two business I manage and, and my background is is very much in the kind of advertising world you know I've kind of come from a sort of selling sort of creativity selling media um you know that that side of things and and now we sort of support creative SaaS and, and tech businesses along that journey Awesome. And uh, well, really to uh, get uh, off with a good start, uh, there is always a question that I like to ask to everyone that does business development, because I think it's uh, one of the most, uh, uh, probably one of the most asked questions when it comes to BD, which is, what is business development really? How do you define business development, Adam? Oh, start me off on a on an easy question, why don't you? Um, business development. So, Business development is moving uh, potential, you know, prospects from attracting them at the top of a funnel, ultimately through to nurture, through to close and, and sort of winning new business. Um, so the BD role encompasses any kind of sales or marketing tactic, in my opinion, that helps identify and attract the key people that you want to work with and ultimately bring them on board as, as clients. Um, is that too vague? <laughs> I don't know. I think that's good. I, I think actually that's uh, that's also my definition of BD. Uh, and I think that's also... Um... I think that's also what eventually confuses people, right? Because I think when we think about business development, indeed, like we could be doing so many things. And then I think people get really stuck into how we do that, um, which leads us to the next question. So, of course, talking with many business developers, being business developers ourselves as well, what do you think are the main challenges uh, of business developers? Also, maybe the things that you find the most uh, um, uh, in your community. 
Um, yeah, I mean, there's there's so many here. I mean, some people are sort of like trying to work out how to build a a foundation to to business development. Like, what is where, where do I start, right? And and that kind of gets down to the sort of positioning strategy type of route, implementing new processes, operations before you even can get into doing the BD. Um, so some people struggle on that level. Um, we do get a lot of conversations around sort of positioning. What is positioning? What does good positioning look like? Should I niche? Shouldn't I niche? Like all these kind of things and how to create focus. Um, we get a lot of things around sort of just generating leads. You know, what tactics work? What doesn't work? How do I generate new business leads? Um, you know, it's never sort of that golden, uh, that magic wand answer that people are looking for. It's ultimately a combination of a lot of things and and in today's world and even more sort of complex ecosystem um so it's about navigating that it's about how do you get marketing and sales to work more effectively together um and i think that's going back to your first question i think that's what's interesting about business development because actually i think the language of business development combines sales and marketing, you know, because if we just talked about sales, then marketers would feel quite put off. And if we just talked about marketing, the salespeople would feel put off. But I think business development forces us to think about how those two disciplines work in, in harmony. And I think that is, that's one of the keys to doing effective BD. Um, so yeah, there, there's some of the challenges, um, you know, we that, that get thrown on us, but um, I could, I mean, I could go on all day. There's so many. <laughs> <laughs> totally, totally. Yeah, I can definitely recognize some of them. I think lead generation is one of the most, probably the question uh, of most BDs, but indeed there's so many different shades in it and uh, so many different challenges that uh, that we can tackle. But talking more about you, uh, Adam, why did you start in business development? How did you end up in business development? So, um, yes, yeah, so my, my background, I started sort of in graphic design and then I, I, I didn't sort of focus too much at university. So I, when I came out of university and in the first recession uh, in, the, in the UK in 2008, um, you know, I didn't I didn't know kind of what I was going to get into. And so I fell into recruitment, which was, was kind of my first kind of sales role. Um, and I learned a lot about myself doing that, but I was keen to get back into the creative world. So then I moved into recruiting salespeople within the creative space. And then I moved into just selling creativity and selling agencies. Um, so that was kind of my, my journey into it. And, and, and to be honest, I think I spent the first five, six, seven years trying to get out of business development. I, I I was like, this isn't for me. I should be a creative. I wanted to be a, a strategist or a creative thinker. And it just didn't resonate with me. I felt like it was it was this sort of ugly duckling of the world that I was in. And then my mind shift changed. That was through someone who, you know, who recruited me and, you know, getting involved in sort of people like Simon Sinek. And I started to see the world of new business and sales very differently. And, and when I saw it for the breadth of the skills that it, it is today and some of the things we're talking about, from positioning to marketing to sort of building a brand, attract, chase, all of these things, I started to realize how exciting a career path business development actually is. And it was actually just my mind that was restricting me. So from that point on, I then sort of became like, I actually, I love this. I love BD. I flipped entirely. And now I run an entire business and another community purely around business development. But, you know, I think a lot of it is about helping other people on that journey too because i know i was lost and i was a bit stuck you know a lot of people fall into sales fall into bd uh without that that intention so how do we make bd a more you know like driven choice as a as a career path and actually help people understand how exciting a career and and and, and how multifaceted it is um so that they can they can actually want to be a part of this world Oh, that's that's great. And uh, I, I think we really shared the same experience because for me, it was really the same. Like I ended up in BD really randomly. I just needed a job while I was studying and I really didn't like it at the beginning. That's something I I just like, it was, it seemed so far from me. Uh, but then the same that I started working with someone else that actually had a, a, a bit of a different view on BD. And then I really got passionate about it. And indeed, I mean, at the BD school, we share really the same vision in the sense we want to help people 
fall in love with this field, right? And not like, uh, you know, having to uh, fall into it like we did. So um, really cool to hear. Uh, let's talk now more about community. So first, tell us a little bit more about BD Matters. Uh, what for a community it is? What do you do? Uh, and then we can go a little bit more in depth into uh, how to leverage communities in business development. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So I think, you know, growing up in, in the BD world, I think BD Matters is kind of everything I wanted, right? When I what, what I didn't have when I was going through my career. And, you know, as I said, I felt quite isolated. I didn't feel like there was there was a, a network uh, that understood me, a company that understood me. I didn't feel like there were training or mentoring opportunities. And so I always wanted to bring BD people together because I felt like we all felt like this. Um, and BD Matters was was the way I did that. And I guess it took the first sort of lockdown in, in 2019 where I sort of went, you know what, everyone's feeling isolated right now. Everybody is at home and this is the perfect opportunity. Let's Let's jump on Zoom. Let's start conversation. And we did that. And we we started conversation and it started with, you know, five, 10, 15. And, you know, within a year, we were 300 members, you know, just people all feeling exactly the same and, and we're joining for fun. And, um, you know, that that's kind of what it, uh, what, 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 how it started. I think there's a couple of things that, um, that, that hold true to sort of its, its kind of manifesto and the vision of it. So one of the things is around, um, changing the perception of sales and sales being seen as this kind of dirty word, uh, people not wanting to be in sales, people not wanting to be as a salesperson. So I think our relationship with the word sales and sort of how that fits into our kind of our mindset, our culture, um, you know, we need to sort of deal with that relationship. And that has a lot of implications on on how well, well it's done. Um, so there's that. And then there's also the part of the, the educational part to working with grassroots talent and how we kind of help them see BD as this kind of exciting career path. So that's a big part of the community. Um, but then beyond that, it's just about learning and networking and feeling like I'm not alone. I'm not isolated. Right. And so I know, you know, with the world of sales, there's so many ups and downs, you know, trials and tribulations with it. It's a it's an emotional roller coaster. And so having a community where you can sort of lean on them, talk about the good days, the bad days, the people that have ghosted you, the the wins, you know, all these sort of things. And when you're stuck in a rut, you're you're in a losing streak or no one's responding to your phone calls, you know, just having someone else who's there with you right in the same place as you that can relate is so powerful and can just help unlock, um, you know, what you need to, to sort of get on and grow your, in your job. So, yeah, that's kind of like a lot of the reasons um, sort of why, why I started it and what it what it does now. Absolutely. I, I, yeah, I think it was uh, for me it was also a little bit the same when I started thinking about BD. Then we really went more into the uh, educational side of it, because, but we really believed, of course, that uh, you can really empower people with knowledge, and then they can feel more confident in what they do and so on. But it was really a little bit the same. I was like, wow, that's that feels really lonely. And then it's really fun because, like, whenever you talk with business developers, they all share the same feeling, which is like, well, I really feel like a lonely wolf in my company or like I feel like I have to do all these things and I'm pretty much alone uh, so I think in that sense communities are really a powerful tool in terms of like really building this belonging feeling um, and really helping you uh, just being with like-minded people but what do you think are the other benefits more from a business perspective uh, what do you think are the main benefits of uh, having a community of really like focusing on building a community of like-minded people yeah so I think um Community is an interesting one because I think what we've seen in the last, you know, few years or so or longer, you know, is that ultimately technology in the hands of sort of everybody or the wrong people means that lots of people can do things, right? Like automated outreach, for example. So email, LinkedIn, right? It's very cheap and easy for salespeople to use these tools. And what that means is that we've seen about like, I think it's about a 30% uplift in sort of cold outreach, right across the, 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 the sales sphere. And people are bombarded with messages all the time. And I think ultimately what's also happened is that people have then sort of gone, well, how do we stand out? You know, we just sound the same like everybody else and we're just getting ignored. So more volume isn't isn't giving us more leads. And so that's then shifted into sort of, well, how do we attract people? How do we use marketing content? How do we 
add more value and and that's why we've seen things like the rise of events and you know the amount of content we see now on linkedin and even that is now you know hard to 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 get cut through so i think what community does is kind of go one step even beyond that in terms of the attraction and and the nurturing of of prospects because if you think what what the the best type of selling right is is not selling right the best type of selling is just helping people and adding value to their lives and letting them find you and you come to you when the timing is right right it, it's it's a much more effective way of marketing and 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 ensuring that you're getting quality leads that you're not having to sort of qualify everybody out and you're not trying to reach out to every person in a certain industry you are literally just being available and seen as a sort of thought leader in that industry. And I think building a community enables you to do that. It allows you to sort of build relevant prospects that you can connect to. It doesn't feel overly salesy. It brings people in, it adds value. It it allows you to demonstrate your brand and your tone of voice and, and, and build a relationship, right? And that's the part in sales that is so missing is the relationship building. Community is all about relationship building. So it's the ultimate relationship builder. And so if you can do that and and don't build a community to then sell to the community, we keep gray matters and BD matters very, very separate. And I invite all gray matters competitors to BD matters. BD, it's very important that BD Matters is about the community. It's not a feeder sales channel for Grey Matters. And I treat it as such, right? And so it's all about adding value to those people all the time. And then when the time is right and they're and, they're, and when they're looking, they will find solutions like Grey Matters or the people that they're looking for. Um, but it's just, I think that part about being helpful, being valuable, um, being relevant, and and giving you uh, an opportunity to nurture, I just think community and communities just enable you to do that better than anything else. Absolutely, absolutely, and yeah, I completely agree on the aspect of just bringing value to people. Because at the end of the day, uh, yeah, it's like sales is really just. Uh, uh, I think sales is really a results uh, um, after you brought enough value to people. Just exactly what you uh, what you said. So if you uh, you know if you had to recommend some steps, you know, uh, to build a community to maybe a business that wants to invest more into uh, building relations with their target audience and so on, what would be your uh, let's say a few tips you know for someone that wants to start a community yeah and this is the best thing and i think i don't think we necessarily have to think of community as building this kind of massive massive community with thousands of people right a community is really can be three people plus to be quite honest with you so what i think you want to do with community is find people that have similar challenges to the ones that you have and I would start really, really small. And actually, if you look at your, you know, your colleagues or you look at your clients um, and the people you're you're close to, that's where I would start. Don't try and build a community with people that you don't have any relationships with. Community has to start small and has to be uh, quality over quantity, right? So you've got to start with those people that are close to you that are going to sort of the the beating heart of the community, and and so. If you reach out to just your clients, for example, and you invited them all to, I don't know, a session or a dinner or whatever it was, something that a workshop, something that brought those people together around a uh, a, a similar trait or a, a sort of common challenge or theme, I think that's the best place to start. And, and you know, people often get scared about all oh, events or, 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 you know, all this kind of stuff. But it's no different. Community is just about bringing those people together and listening to one another. And the more you kind of just ask questions and facilitate and listen, the more you'll learn from one another and you'll start to build deeper and deeper relationships. And, you know, I guarantee once you do that, people will then get so much value and they will enjoy it so much. They'll be able to sort of open up, really connect with each other. And then from that point on, they might invite another person to join your community, or they might say, oh, yes, this would be relevant for this person. And and let it grow kind of almost organically. You know, you don't have to sort of really push community um, because you want there to be a core substance to it that is that feels real. Um, and that from that point on, you can then start to evolve kind of what this community stands for and starts to put in, you know, some more process to it. Um, 
but yeah, that that's how I would start. Start really small with the people closest to you and make sure it's it's something, you know, valuable and relevant to to what they're going through. Great. Yeah, totally agree as well. And more in terms of like more practical things, it was like one uh, challenge we experienced from the very beginning was actually deciding like where, like practically where to host this community, right? So because if you look online, there are so many options. You can have a Facebook group, you can have a WhatsApp group, you can have a LinkedIn group, you can have uh, anything. There are thousands and thousands of tools that you can use to build communities Personally, I have to be very honest, I didn't find one which would be absolutely perfect that would have everything and that would also like help you keep people engaged. Um, do you have some recommendations like based on your experience? Do you have some tools or maybe like some practical like places uh, that are best suited for communities? Or maybe do you think there are different ones for the different types of communities? Yeah, it's a, it's a really it's a great question, but it's a really difficult one to answer. And unfortunately, I don't think I've got the best answer for it either because I don't think I've solved it. Um, I I think, you know, we've tried with a few different platforms, and as you said, that there, there are there are many out there. I think one of the most important things to understand is that people, as in like your average you know person roaming about the world, is already connected to many different things. So we know Facebook and LinkedIn and Instagram, TikTok, you know, these things monopolize the market. And so it makes sense to probably start with where they are rather than trying to move them onto an entirely new platform. That's always tricky. So, you know, we use Slack because we know a lot of our community um, are already using Slack. So, so to add another channel, it's not difficult for them. Um, so that's where we try and sort of bring people in. LinkedIn as well. We have a LinkedIn group because we know that's kind of where people are. And, and so they, they, there's not an additional barrier. Um, we tried things like the Mighty Networks. Uh, that didn't work for us because for that very reason, it just felt like an entirely new platform that people weren't familiar with. Um, we weren't that familiar with, and it was quite difficult to sort of move people across to that. Um, so that was difficult. And we've seen people use Guild as well, which is another tool. Um, so there's lots of things that you can use out there. I just think it needs to be something that's easily accessible and easy for people to to use. Um, otherwise, they won't. And, and building community in the sort of longer term is, is some of the hardest things to do. Um, because you know you're asking people to contribute and kind of go out of their day and they sort of really need to feel connected to that and i think that takes time um that you know if, if you're running a community like you know ours and the bd school you have to put in a lot of effort to sort of drive that and maintain that with content and giving people reasons to keep coming back um but if you're building a community on sort of a smaller level then you know, I would just do things like, you know, Zoom calls once a month or something like that, where you can sort of put things in people's diaries and therefore they're sort of more likely to attend um, or physical meetups as well. I think now that we're getting back into the sort of physical events, I think people are longing for that physical, um, you know, chemistry with people and actually meeting one another. And so putting those in the diary and, and bringing people together in real life, I think is going to be, um, you know, quite an effective way of, of you know, building community. But um, yeah, I guess that's that's kind of my, my advice, but it's there's no kind of one size fits all. Um, you know, again, I think start slow, uh, listen to what the, the community want and, and ask them, right? Get their feedback constantly on what would work for them and, and that would help you. Awesome. Yeah, I totally, totally agree. Once again, it's like uh, we also tried different options and it was just like, okay, that doesn't matter. And then we thought the same. It's like, well, it's pointless to start like adding new tools. Like I remember at some point there was this new app. Uh, how was it called? It was the audio app, um, which was only Clubhouse. for us. Yeah, Clubhouse. Yeah. At some point, everybody was on it. And I was like, yeah, all right. But first of all, it's only Apple uh, users as of now. And then what do we do? We we get yet another channel. Like personally, I really hate it when I have to be on too many places at the same time. Uh, so that can definitely be a, a challenge. I'm really trying to find find the right uh, uh, format and the right place. But uh, did you encounter other challenges as you were building your communities? Uh, and if so, uh, which ones are they? Yeah, I think the the, the biggest challenge I, I, I guess we faced is that when we started, we were a free community, right, for anybody to join. <clears throat> and then we, we did, you know, eventually... 
I was just investing so much time and energy and love into this thing. And it was not, you know, turning over anything. So I was like, I have to commercialize this. And so naturally, you're going to see a massive drop off from the sort of hundreds of members that had joined for free. Suddenly moving them to a sort of more paid model was really hard. So it's kind of like, you know, the Spotify effect and you're going into that sort of freemium to premium type model. Um, and I, I, I don't necessarily think we got that we got that right. And we, we, you know, we're constantly tweaking things, looking at kind of the value of what people get, the price of it, um, and trying to sort of really work that out, I think has been difficult. Um, and, and trying to, you know, and a lot of people have said to us that, you know, they value the community and they want to be a part of it, but they just don't have time to engage with it. And that's a really difficult objection to handle. So you're not doing anything wrong. It's just that that person just can't find it in their day and their work and their life to sort of actually engage with it so they don't sign up and i suppose you know like any any kind of content or any marketing you're vying with their time you know you're fighting for that attention just like everything else is and it's so hard to do that um and it might just be a gradual thing that you just need to build over time where eventually people sort of just can't afford to not have it or it's about constantly listening to it listening to the community and finding ways to sort of make it uh more accessible um so like i think physical meetups like i said before are really important because um you know when people are tuning in to zoom calls or things like that they're only kind of half paying attention right um to to what they're listening to whereas if you create a physical meter at a certain time at a certain place people will be there and they will give you more attention and actually the more attention they give you the more value that they will get out of it and the more likely they are to feel a part of the community and and, and stick with it so it's about sort of that engagement but yeah certainly moving people into sort of the tiering the modules of sort of how do you you know is there a free option to engage with this community and then what does a sort of more paid option look like is is some of the sort of tricky uh tricky things we encountered interesting very interesting and how did you overcome some of these challenges you know because of course what you mentioned i think it's very important like just like the constant tweaking you know and listening to your audience and what they want and so on uh but was there something else like some breakthroughs you uh, let's say that you had like as things were not working or maybe you have some examples of like uh, when things were not working and then like how did you manage to uh, uh turn things around yeah well what, i think one of the best things we did actually and it was it was quite a simple move was actually just plan far in advance so we we you know as i said it was just me doing it i wasn't making any money from it so what was becoming difficult was me trying to find speakers or come up with content and ideas for every single sort of meetup and session was becoming more and more difficult on top of my other work. And it all became a bit last minute and a bit rushed. And I think ultimately the community will feed off that, right? Ultimately, you know, you're a business, you're communicating. So the way you communicate is really important and people want to sign up to something that seems well organized right and i have to admit you know back in 2019 when i was running around it it wasn't but the world was a bit all over the place and i think being scrappy was the thing to do so it was it was fine um but what i think we did especially like last year is that we started to plan our calendar almost like six months in advance um and we also introduce uh workshops so now we do like every month there's an industry interview a meetup and a workshop right so there's a lot of opportunities to be kind of inspired network and learn now and so i think once you start planning that out six months in advance and then members and new potential members can see what's kind of in the pipeline they kind of know what they're signing up for and so they can see that now um and they can get more excited about it and and it means that we're not sort of rushing around last minute to sort of find find people find speakers or find topics to to encroach on um so yeah, that that was really important, um, and I think the the other part is about how do you how do you use the community to help feed the community, right? So ultimately, you know, we're a small business, right, and the community is bigger than us, and there's only so much we can do. But when you get into sort of the peer to peer where world and learning, I think if you can sort of bring those guys with you and the fact that we have a core mission and a value system which other people believe in it means that those people are more willing to give their time and energy into supporting the community so we have like a group of 
sort of mentors that, that are kind of the core of the community. So it's not just my voice all the time. You're hearing from sort of, you know, eight to 10 different experts all the time mentoring you. The same with the workshops. It's not us doing the workshops. There are other individuals, specialists that we bring in to do that. And so what that sort of does is build this kind of wider ecosystem of of voices that people want to listen to. Um, and the community then can leverage their networks and and, and feed into that. So bringing those people into the community and giving them a sort of purpose and getting them sort of bought into the vision was was also a sort of really important step for us. Great. And uh, actually, you really gave me the next question, uh, which is, uh, of course, you mentioned in terms of like growing the community, one thing is definitely um, just using the network and just making sure that people enjoy it so much that they want to invite other people. Uh, and then, of course, using leveraging other people's networks like your speakers, your mentors and so on. Uh, but what other uh, strategies do you have or tips maybe um, uh, do you have to grow the community, really to take it in, like to the next level? Uh, what advice would you give to someone that is at that stage in which they really want to grow and they need to find ways to uh, engage with more people? Yeah, well, I think um, once I think once the community is more established, right, like like ours is, and you can see the kind of events and content and and sort of benefits you get from it, you can then sort of move into more of a sort of sales led approach, right? So. We, you know, just reaching out to sort of our, our core audience of people in BD that we think this would be relevant for and connecting with them on LinkedIn, um, inviting them to the group and, and trying to sort of get them to trial it is really important. Um, we do offer like a free trial. So the thing with community is that, you know, it it doesn't have to be uh, uh, different communities treated differently, but we will always, we always let people trial an event or come for a month for absolutely free because we want people to find out what it's like to be part of the community and and see it for themselves. We've got nothing to hide, so we use kind of discount codes or free trials so that people can sort of see it for themselves. And if they value it, then they 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 sign up. Um, there's also pricing things, so we do kind of discounts if you sign up for a year. Um, that's that's really you know useful way of getting people to tie in, and we do run promotions from time to time. So it's just giving people that that opportunity to sort of really you know see what what BD Matters stands for and and how they they can get involved. Um, and then the, the the other part I sort of touched on it before is the kind of freemium model. So as well as the paid model, we kind of did also go back and then think, well, why create a barrier to entry for everybody? So there's actually on our on our model what you can do is the industry interviews that we do once a month anybody can join them so we use that as our sort of halo products that people can sort of come into and, and and benefit from and what we do is that that's a live session but only members paying members get the recording that comes afterwards so it's a way of kind of attracting people in but then sort of creating a barrier to sort of moving on to the next step so you can get the industry interview for free. You can also join our Slack channel for free in, in a certain section of it, not the, the secure paying members area. And you can also add your profile to our website for free. So we, we allow that to happen. That builds the community and makes people feel connected to it. Um, and it start, you know, it's like the first ring of the ladder, you know, getting them sort of involved, but then they want to sort of find out more. So I would sort of really try and find ways to entice people, give them a feeling of what it's like to be a member, and then slowly start to sort of, you know, move them along and nurture them into a sort of more higher paid subscription. Great. Thank you so much. I think that was also my last question, actually, which was really like business development oriented. However, I did realize that we did not mention where you're based, Adam. Where is BD Matters based? So if people want to join maybe some offline events or other events, uh, where are they going to find you? Well, I mean, I'm based in London, right? So the workshops are London based, but the interviews and the workshops are on Zoom. So you know, we do have you know people across Europe and, and American members that 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 join us. The only difficulty can be the um, the timing. At the moment, most of the events are sort of twelve o'clock, which is uh, GMT Greenwich Mean Time. So that's the only barrier. But other than that, people can join from anywhere because it's an online community. And I think as we grow um, our membership base in different areas, we will probably introduce more meetups at different time zones that are more 
um, relevant. But yeah, like anyone across Europe for sure should should get involved. That shouldn't be a barrier whatsoever um, for them to get to get into the community. So um, yeah, we'd love to see you and uh, do come check it out if you're uh, if you want to get on the site. Awesome. I was actually asking, like, is there any offline event coming taking place in London? So, so personally, I love London and I'm always finding I'm always trying to find ways to get back and uh, just spend a few days there. So is there something lined up in the near future, maybe? Yeah, yeah, we've got we've got uh, loads, actually. So that, um, next week we, we're hosting about 71 uh, marketing agencies in our offices in Old Street. So you can come along. That's in conjunction with a, a group called the Pimento Network. Um, we are doing a brunch next month. Um, we do a Christmas party and a summer party. So they're all sort of London based. Um, the workshops are monthly. They're in Holborn in central London. Um, so people can come to them if they are in London. Um, and we do a women's brunch, uh, which we do sort of twice a year, maybe three times a year uh, in London. So we're we're trying to sort of always build on more physical events. And that's kind of what we, what we want to do. Obviously, they, they do tend to be London focused because that's where the, the majority of our members are. And it's, you know, it's hard to sort of keep moving those events around. Um, so that's a hub. But yeah, there's there's lots coming up. So check out the, the website. And, um, you know, if you want to sign up to the newsletter, then you can at least get the bulletin and then you can see some of the, the live events uh, for you to attend. Oh, great. I'm I'm quite interested in the parties uh in the parties like <laughs> type of events. Like of what can we expect? Like uh how British are the parties? Are we gonna get like tea or something like that? Or is it like a pub base? So, so how do they look like? More like the fun part of the events. Yeah, so I guess the the women's brunch, I suppose, I, I would say is the most British event where it is kind of more like tea, like you know, fancy cafe style uh brunch. Um, that's like a round table discussion. Um, so yeah, that's, that's quite British. I mean, the other events are, well, they probably be based in a pub, which is quite British, right? The, so, um, that's, uh, there's a lot of booze involved in those. So there, there could normally like, you know, alcohol, you know, included in, in all of that for paying members and stuff. Um, so yeah, we haven't planned our summer party yet, but normally it's it's last year it was like a roof terrace that we took over in central London. So we're always looking for cool venues that are quite iconic. So overlooking like, you know, either the Thames or overlooking like the Shard or something like that. So we can, you know, um paint that picture. Obviously, we try and do it when the weather's nice because that isn't always the case in, in London. Um, but I, I'm I'm all up for making them more British, or if you if you want things, if this is what I mean, the community, right? If the the community wants certain things if they're not seeing enough then they tell us right let us know what you want and and we make it happen you know we're we're here to serve them not the other way around <laughs> awesome awesome yeah because i think like personally i really love when i go to networking uh events or conferences and so on like i mean there, there are some that are really interesting and so on but then eventually i think the most effective part is really the networking really just meeting people into more informal uh um informal spaces right and just seeing them as people uh, i think that's really the most valuable thing uh, in networking events so uh, definitely uh something to put in our calendars yeah, definitely. I, I agree. And I'd love to do more stuff like that. Like even going to things like art galleries and stuff like that, like just things mm -hmm. that you would normally do because they just build human connection. And I've seen people do like walks and things where they just kind of go out to like the English countryside and go for a walk. You know, it's just a chance to, as you say, network, meet other people, which is sometimes the biggest thing out of communities. Sometimes people don't want to constantly be listening to a workshop or learning. They just want to meet other people. And so I actually made a note today just to create these kind of power networking hours that just let people chat. And, you know, we get the hell out of the way and we just let people connect with one another because sometimes that's just the most value that, that they get from it and that's what they want so yeah we want to try and make that happen for for all of our members amazing nice adam thank you so much for this chat i think it was really insightful and it was great to get to know a little bit more about uh, bd matters from the inside and of course thank you so much for all the tips for uh, our listeners in terms of uh, communities what to do and what not to do as well which is uh, uh, equally important uh, do you have maybe one final word or one final piece of advice for the business developers listening Oh, do I have one? You're not alone. <laughs> I don't know if that's advice or not, but um, 
you know, I think there's the, the role is becoming sort of ever more complex, right? And and multifaceted. And I think, you know, with everyone talking about sort of mental health um implications in the last few years and everything, is that I think it's very easy for you guys to feel isolated and you know, we've all been in, in in hard places in our careers and our lives and things like that. So I think to know that you're not alone and there is, you know, light at the end of the tunnel and there's ups and downs and there's people like me and Lucia that can help you. And and sometimes it's just that that talk or that that pep talk with somebody can unlock everything. So um yeah, I think uh, reach out to fellow BD people. We we don't we're not always about competition, right? We're there to help one another, and we can help sales uh, and BD get a lot further and and change the reputation if we do stick together. So, um, yeah, that's what I would advise. Um, connect with more salespeople. Great, thank you so much, Adam, and thank you everyone for listening. Stay tuned on our channels to listen to more Let's Talk BD podcast episodes. And uh, everyone, I'll see you very soon on all our channels. Bye, Adam. Thank you so much. Thanks, Lucia. Great to chat to you.